Hi there, it's Carmen Bright. You're probably thinking that I'm looking at how to fish instructional videos, but not quite. You can see that I've got my violin bow here. The reason why we're looking at the violin bow is actually thank you to our student, Jack, who was showing me the other day the reason why he was rosening quite a lot. And when he mentioned that he finds that he's not getting much sound out of, of his bow, I had a closer look at it. Now, as you know, with rosin, rosin helps create the friction and the sound when you apply the bow on the violin string. But I noticed his whole bow was really grimy and dirty. For example, I'll just show you closer here. You can see that there's a lot of build up there of of grit. Now, I'm as, much, as careful as I am when I'm holding my bow, you can see that there's part of the my finger oils which still inevitably affect part of the bow. So as much as I'm not really touching it, it still gets a bit of a, a build up. So that's why it's important when you when you have a situation where a bow isn't making enough sound, even though you're putting a lot of rosin on it, it may be worthwhile giving it a good clean. So this is for you Jack. I'm going to show you how to clean your violin. You can see here I've got the the bow screw and this is how we can tighten and loosen our bow as you know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it all the way out. So you can see how loose it is. I'm going to pull the screw out. Nothing's going to happen. Put it at a safe spot and what you'll see is that the bow hair will be separated from the frog. Now, it's fine like that. Nothing's going to pull away there if you don't tug at it. But the objective is to clean our bow with methylated spirits. This is pretty potent. It does clean, it does clean out any grime and excess rosin. So the idea is to clean the, the bow hair as if it's like new. And how we're going to do that is by using a lint-free cloth, a nice clean one. You can see I'm just going to pull out a one sheet of this. And I tend to sort of use that and then discard it. So if you've got something like that, you can get from the supermarket or from the hardware store. You'll probably realise that I'm actually leaving my, my bow stick just between my legs because I feel like I've got a bit more control with that. Methylate spirits is something which you'll probably find at home somewhere and if you're a little young, make sure that you get your parents to help you with the cleaning. It's got a little bit of a, it's a, it's a poisonous liquid so it's important that it, though it may look like water, it's best not to be drunk because it makes you very ill. So what you'll find is once you've got the methylated spirits out, the idea is only to dampen the lint-free cloth, the nice clean cloth, so long as you are able to remove the stickiness and the rosin off the bow hair. From the tip, I usually start from the tip of the bow down towards the frog. It's very important to do this for probably within the, like, in five to ten minutes, you can pretty much do that. What I would suggest is make sure that none of the methylated spirits goes on the bow hair itself. Oh, uh, sorry, not on the bow hair, on the bow stick. So just make sure you're not touching that because it may actually remove the varnish. So, you see, I'm just getting, so long as the the, the bow hair is damp with the, the methylated spirits, you can clean it quite effectively in a short amount of time. But I'm just going to take my time, make sure that I have it nice and thorough. Good clean. You can also hear it 
it just has a cleaner sound. It's looking very damp and not coloured. Probably looks like um, blonde hair. It just looks clean and not not as white because there isn't any rosin on it. So at the moment I've done about half of it. Can you see the difference? Because that's the wet section and this is the section which hasn't been rosined, um, the rosin removed yet. It does take time but it's worth doing it. How often you may ask? Well, some violin luthiers may say that if it's dirty it's pretty much about um, time to replace your bow head. Now it just really depends on how, how much your bow is. If your bow is fairly expensive and you're playing it professionally and such, you may find that you do re wish to re replace the bow hairs and that's where you go to a violin shop to get that done. But mostly if it's, if it's just the fact that it gets dirty, kids play their violin and they, they, just, they just don't think about their, their fingers and touching it very well. Yeah, well what happens is yeah, if you've got clean hands and such, it's fine. You can touch that a little bit whilst you're cleaning. But it just as often as you need to and you find that you're having problems actually cleaning and actually making that, that, that beautiful sound which you, you want on your violin. So that's the idea, just as long as needed. downward straight, you will find that it's easier and it keeps the bow hair nice and straight. The last thing you want to do is have the bow hair all crumpled because when it dries it becomes uneven and not straight. So that would that wouldn't be very effective when you're playing the violin having an uneven um, hair. It makes it easier to rosin too. Okay, I'm going to get into this section here. It's really, really dirty. So I'm going to give a bit, spend a bit more time down here. And so I'm just holding the, the bow frog. It's giving me some good support. Oh, that's feeling really good. The bow hairs are telling me, this feels great. going to give, give it a bit of a final application. And the other reason why you don't want to be touching the bow, the bow stick is that uh, methylated spirits will actually affect the varnish. So it's important not to, to have any problems with that, otherwise you'll have an unevenly look, looking bow. Sometimes there's a build up in between 
the hair, so you want to make sure you can seam that nice and clearly as well. This is the first time I've actually cleaned this particular set of bow hair. About a year ago I had it this bow rehaired. So it's done pretty well, the fact that it hasn't got overly dirty. But um, like everything, you look after your instrument, it looks after you. as you can. <coughs> and also be careful not to, um, to inhale a lot of the, the methylated spirits. Very drying and also quite toxic. That's why it's good to use an adult to help you doing this. Okay, I finished that and I'm just going to make sure I put the methylated spirits away before I dry my bow. Now, we could hold it like this for 12 hours, but it's important to, to leave it at a safe spot, somewhere where no one can actually touch it, away from prying fingers. And where I find it can be pretty handy is actually on my violin stand. So this is one of the ways I actually use to dry my, my, my actual bow. So I keep it in this, um, in, in this particular way. So that way I allow at least 12 hours or even overnight to allow it to dry. So that way all the methylated spirits, which has removed the rosin, will be able to dry and then when you apply it back again and screw it, it would be 100%. But first of all, I'm going to put it in a way that I can keep the bow hair nice and straight. So you can see how I can, I can leave it here. And it's untwisted, it's nice and straight. So there you have it. This is just an idea of just one of the ways to clean your violin bow. There are many different ways and different ideas which people have, but this is one which I had learnt from my violin teacher, so I wanted to share that with you today. I'd love your feedback. I'm sure that will help you create a beautiful tone when you're playing the violin next. So take the time to clean it, let it dry, and then when you're finished and you put it back together, you just rosin it just the way that you rosin a new bow.